Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Um, today, obviously by the title of the video, you can see that this is gonna be my six month post-op video. Today is December 18th. And today I'm officially six months post-op to the date. So I have no like rhyme or rhythm to how I'm gonna do this. I'm just gonna go down my questions um, on my channel. Um, I had made a post asking you guys um, what you wanted to know and then I also got tons and tons of comments on my first post op video I'll link that one here in the description bar if for any reason you're seeing this one before that one that when I get into a little bit more of like the process, the actual day of surgery, my doctor, all those details. But on today's video, I'm just gonna be answering you guys' questions that you had. And then of course, doing like the showing of the body after. I filmed this video um, one other time, but I was having technical difficulties with the audio, but I do still have the clips of when I was showing my body because obviously you didn't need audio. So I'm gonna insert those after this. And now we're gonna get right into it. So the first question that I have is, does your doctor speak English? Do you know if he's board certified or has any deaths under his belt? So my doctor is fluent in English. As a matter of fact, when I met him, I couldn't believe that he spoke Spanish um, because he is in fact so fluent. So yes, the answer is yes, he does speak English and so you don't have to worry about that at all. And then he is board certified. When you go to his Instagram page, you can see that. Also, does he have any deaths under his belt? Um, that was one of the primary reasons that I chose my doctor was because he had no deaths under his belt. He's a very, very natural doctor. He goes for the safest approach, personally, I feel like. He won't just give you the extreme work. He won't just do what you say because you tell him to do it and he's and you're paying him. He's going to do what he feels is great for your body and what he feels is safe. I just feel like he's just like overall morally safe. Like, I just... I couldn't have chosen a better doctor like he's just great okay someone asked me did you sit right after surgery so yes I did I was laying down on my bed and I had my um, boppy pillow under me for those of you that don't know what a boppy pillow is it's like the baby pillow it's kind of like a ring I'll see if I can insert I'll insert a clip of that here that one I purchased from Target for $40 and that's what I was sitting on at first because it has a little bit more cushion in it. Um, the BBL pillow I then bought a few days later, but that one's a little bit harder. And I'll actually insert both of them so that way you can kind of see the difference. Um, the BBL pillow has like a firmer um, cushion, I guess you can say. Um, it's very, very firm and it is a little bit uncomfortable um, but ultimately that's obviously what gives you the results that you desire because it's firmer so you can't really push it down with the pressure of your body whereas the boppy pillow when your body's on it obviously your body's heavier than the pillow so it kind of starts to flatten out and then you end up kind of having pressure on your butt which is the whole thing you were trying to avoid so obviously using the BBL pillow is what makes more sense but the sitting on the, on the boppy pillow was ultimately more comfortable um, obviously from an investment point of view the um, bbl pillow makes more sense because you want to save as much of your fat in your butt as possible but then of course being comfortable is all you want coming out of surgery because you're so uncomfortable so, so yes i did sit on my butt um but with the pillow okay someone said so you mentioned your best friend traveling with you where does she stay did the recovery allow her occupancy as well so yes my best friend stayed with me and yes the recovery house allowed her to stay um, the pricing is a little bit different since she's not the one who is needing care nurses or anything like that but ultimately it is a charge because she is taking up a bed there and they're feeding her her meals as well so yes it she can and it is a cost, but it is a lower cost since she's not the one eating all of those things. Okay, another question. Hi, were you able to get a cost of the surgery before seeing the doctor? If not, was he able to provide you with an estimate? 
Yes, I was able to get my price before I went to go see him. I told him exactly what I wanted. I sent him pictures of my body. So that way he was able to see exactly what he was going to do, what he needed to do. And then he quoted me from there. Now, I don't know if this is just for my case in particular. Um, I imagine it can change in certain situations. For example, if you're adding a service when you get there. So say you guys agreed on a lipo for your stomach and then you get there and you decide or he decides you guys agree that you want a tummy tuck instead um, that would obviously change the pricing um, but I believe only in those types of cases would the price change someone asked how tall am I and I am a five foot one um, very short so I keep getting this question a lot which is outside of the surgery thing but a lot of you keep asking me what lashes I'm wearing. I don't remember the exact style but they are from Shop Cura and I'll include their Instagram in the description bar so that way you guys can look. I wish that I knew the style but I get so many of them and then I just put them in like my lash box and I completely forget to like name them on there so I'm so sorry. What size CC did you get in your boobs? And I got 280 CCs in my breasts. Okay, someone asked how much did you weigh after the weight gain? Um, so I'm gonna break down the whole like weight thing. Prior to surgery, I weighed 127. Um, and then after the weight gain, I weighed 139 140 now after surgery i am 131 132 ultimately i put on i believe about 10 to 12 pounds for the surgery and then someone asked me how long would you say until the majority of the swelling went down so everyone's body is different some people can stay swollen. Um, I've heard for up to like six months. For me personally, I stayed swollen for about more or less three months. Like now being in my six month point, I don't feel like I have a lot of swelling left. I honestly feel like it's on gone. For me, to my eyes anyway, I felt like um, it went down around like two to four months. I guess I won't really know if I'm still swollen until I get to 12 months. Someone asked, don't you have to exercise to keep up with the body? Also, if you were to gain weight, would it go to your butt or just all over your body? You kind of have to exercise in general, but I don't. <laughs> um, but especially after surgery, if you want to make your investment worth it, you don't have to work out if you don't want, you don't have to do anything you don't want to do. Um, just like you don't even have to have surgery. You don't have to do anything. But if you want to make your investment worthwhile, then yes, you're going to want to work out. After surgery, all that really means is that a lot of those fat cells are dead, but it doesn't mean that they're entirely gone you have to have fat on your body. Our fat cells will continue to grow. So for example, if I were to eat like crap and not work out for the next year, then obviously I'm going to gain weight again. Um, and I imagine, I don't know this for sure, but I imagine I'm gonna gain weight in the places that I didn't have lipo first, just because those are still, all of those fat cells are still very well there and alive. Um, as opposed to the ones that were kind of killed off during surgery. So I imagine I would gain weight in those places first. And then obviously after that, then I would start to gain in the places that I normally gained weight in before. I could be wrong. I don't know if that's for certain, but I do know that overall you will gain weight all over the body. How are your scars healing? Did he use a drain for the extra fluid? So my scars are healing beautifully. I actually have not put anything on them, like no type of like Neosporin or like anything really. And they're still healing very nicely. For me, all of my like scars and things, they seem to like hide pretty well. But if they are noticeable, all you need to do is just get like a bleaching cream after the fact and you can kind of lighten those back up. And then the second part to that question was, did he use a drain for the extra fluid? So my doctor does not use drains. I'm sure you guys have seen if you watched other surgery videos, there are women that walk around with those like tubes coming from like their their wounds. Those are the drains or like it's kind of like a drainage like system. 
My doctor doesn't use those. Um, those are typically for like aggressive lipo. I didn't get anything aggressive, so I didn't really need them anyway, but my doctor doesn't use them. But then again, it's also because he doesn't do anything too aggressive. So no, he didn't, but there are other ways to um, release that fluid. Okay, someone asked, did the BBL hurt really bad? How did you feel right after? As long as you're not really sitting on it or putting much pressure on it, it doesn't really hurt. But if you touch it or like move too hard or sit too hard on it for whatever reason, then yes, it will hurt. Um, okay, next question. How were you able to sleep? Since usually they say when you have a breast aug, you have to sleep on your back. And when you get a BBL, you have to sleep on your stomach. I kept two pillows, two or three pillows under my head. Then I had two to three pillows under my back. I had my BBL pillow under my thighs. That created elevation under my butt, obviously, so I didn't get any pressure on my butt. And then I had two to three pillows under my legs as well. So that was the most sensible thing to me um, to do but there are also people who like get floats like swimming floats and I've seen them like either lay on the float or have it under them so that way their breasts can kind of like hang but then I've read somewhere that it's not good for them to hang so that's why I just felt like it made more sense for me to lay on my back what recovery house did you stay at how did you feel when you got back home? So the recovery house that I stayed in was Sweetheart Recovery House. I'll leave their information in the description bar as well. Um, and then how did I feel when I got back home? When I got home, it didn't really change much for me other than like my comfort level, but everything else stayed the same. I still wasn't really able to eat much because of the faha, the faha being so tight. I obviously was still in pain. Um, all of those things were the same. The only thing that really changed was just my peace of mind of being at home. Um, someone asked me, why do Latinas get so much surgery? I don't know. I can only speak for myself and I've only gotten surgery one time in my life. If you feel like it's a lot of things that I've gotten done at once, I'm sorry. But yeah, I don't know. Mm. When were you able to sleep and sit down on your butt? <laughs> I wasn't able to sleep <laughs> for like three months. Um, no, it was very uncomfortable for me to sleep because I sleep on my face or I've always slept on my face. Now, because I've had to sleep on my back for so long, I can now finally sleep on my back and feel like I got sleep. But before the surgery, literally I could not fall asleep until I was asleep on my face. And I did not feel like I got an actual good night's rest unless I was asleep on my face. So that was a very, very, very tough thing for me having to adjust to sleeping on my back on top of being in discomfort and in pain. So yeah, so I didn't get much sleep at all until maybe the third month. I know that sounds miserable, but I'm being honest. That's more or less when I was starting to able to actually get sleep. I started sitting on my butt, I believe also at three months, but even then I would try to put pressure on my thighs, like keep the pressure on my thighs. I don't know if that makes sense to you, but when you sit down, focus yourself on kind of like sitting up and leaving that pressure on your thighs versus your butt. Um, like now I'm sitting on my butt, but here I'm sitting on my thighs. That's obviously the best thing that you can do, but it does kind of feel uncomfortable, starts to hurt your back a little bit. so. Yeah. This wasn't a question. This was, I guess, an observation. But your boobs look fake because the way they sit, they're far apart. We're looking. But you pick the perfect size, which helps. Thanks. So your breasts are going to sit according to, one, the size that you chose, two, the profile that you chose, and three, the way that your breasts naturally sit. So you cannot change how your body is set up unless doctors start to take bones out and stuff. I'm, it's just, you can't. If you have a tinier back, then they're gonna sit in a little bit closer to each other. If you're wider, they're gonna sit a little bit further apart. Of course, according to your body. The profile that I chose because I wanted a very natural look, um, they're gonna sit apart like my regular boobs would. If you do want them to sit closer, then you're gonna have to choose a higher profile so that way they're 
they're more together. But again, for me, I didn't want that. I wanted natural, so I chose um, like a natural profile. Someone said, is it normal to have rippling in your right breast? So by rippling, I hope you mean like a feeling, not a look or an action, if that makes sense. So for me, I do feel kind of like these, almost like a shock or um, if I'm being dramatic and I'm dramatic, like a knife, kind of like a stabbing in my breast. I get that feeling from time to time. What I understand is that is the nerve rebuilding itself, or I'm sorry, not the nerve, the muscle rebuilding itself since you've kind of, you know, cut it up a little bit. So in due time, it'll stop. Like I'm at my six month point and now I feel it maybe once every week as opposed to almost like every day how i was feeling it the first like the first one to three months so it'll lessen over time um, someone asked did the doctor tell you why he didn't put you to sleep all the way before surgery i've had two procedures and they always put me to sleep i don't even wake up until 30 minutes after it's over i can only speak on my specific case i've never had surgery before so to my knowledge or understanding, my doctor didn't want to put me under because I had never been put under before. Obviously, when you're getting put under with any kind of anesthetic, you are taking another risk on top of the surgery risk, if that makes sense. So surgeries are already a risk on their own, but then also including an anesthetic in it, that can get a little bit tricky depending on how your body does or does not handle anesthesia. For example, my mother has had a few surgeries. She's had like a hysterectomy, um, I think like an ear surgery, things like that. And every time they gave her anesthesia, she woke up in the middle of her surgery. Mind you, she had her surgeries here in the US in Houston, Texas. And every single time she's woken up. So for her, I believe it's like her tolerance level that maybe her body can just handle a lot so she's waking up. So for me, I believe that's my case too. So for me, I was just like, well, there's no point. I'm gonna wake up anyway, <laughs> just keep me awake. Then obviously when the pain became too much, I asked him to put me asleep. I don't remember if I woke up during surgery or not. I believe I did. Can't say I know for sure, but that's what I was expecting. Um, so it's all according to your body, your tolerance level, and things like that, and also your preference. I did prefer to not be put under. If you tell him that you want to be, he will put you to sleep. Someone asked me, did you ever consider Dr. Yeli Santos or Dr. Arjuni Mercedes before the doctor you ended up going to? I'm caught on those three doctors. So yes, I did. I had looked at so many doctors I can't even like, can't even tell you their names, um, I, so many. Um, but each and every single one of them had a bad review. Now, with anything in life, with anything that you do, any service, you are gonna have bad reviews. That's inevitable. But I felt like they were a little bit too bad. Like one of them had a death and then one of them, I don't remember what it was, but it was something serious. So for me, I just wasn't really willing to take that risk. Like for example, if someone had gotten on and said, cause there were a few of those reviews as well, um, where people were saying, oh, just don't go. It wasn't worth it. I paid X amount of dollars and it doesn't even look like I got surgery. I, you can't tell a difference. My butt looks the same, you know, things like that. Those reviews I can take. I can handle those because I feel like all you gotta do is just tell the doctor, okay, give me something huge, you know, something like that. So that way you do end up with the results that you want. But for a death or something like a malfunction, something like that, that wasn't a risk I was willing to take. And then also pricing plays a factor in it too. For, I think Dr. Mercedes, I don't know if he had any bad reviews, but I know he was higher priced. And for me, I didn't know, I didn't, I didn't care to pay a bigger price for something that I, I was ultimately gonna get the same results or like I knew what I wanted and any of these doctors ultimately could give it to me. It was just whether I was gonna choose them based on their reviews and based on their price and all those things. All those things play a factor. And then my doctor had no bad reviews, no deaths, 
nothing at least up until the point that I went and I don't see him having those even now but yeah no bad reviews at all could not find one so that's another reason why I chose him okay so someone asked what about pregnancy after the surgery I'm 19 and I might want kids in the far future and I'm curious as to how that works so um, obviously when you get pregnant you typically gain weight so with having surgery despite that you're still gonna gain weight so it's important to especially like if you think you're gonna want to have kids eventually it's important to factor that into the results that you want or at least I feel like that anyway my doctor obviously knew that I didn't have kids and when he was inserting fat into the sides of my thighs he was bearing that in mind he did let me know I don't want to put too much because you have not had kids yet and when you do you're going to I guess my lower body is going to expand or um, obviously I'm going to widen get thicker and to some degree um, so he was very careful with how much he decided to put on the sides of my thighs now again of course that's according to my particular body because I am wider and I do kind of curve out at the lower part of my body so you do want to factor that into your results because you are going to gain weight and your body is going to change when you get pregnant. Did the surgeon tell you about the recovery house or did you find it? So my surgeon did tell me about a recovery house. That's not the one that I chose. The ones that he referred me to were both booked out. So unfortunately I couldn't stay there and I didn't want to change my surgery date. So I just went with another recovery house. I've gotten a lot of the same question asking me about my nose overall have you done your nose and the answer is no I have not gotten my nose done I don't know what people see when they look at my nose I mean don't get me wrong I think I have a nice nose but I do also contour so you want to bear that in mind but like if you look close let me see if I can kind of turn I have like these humps right here like these like bumps right here on the tip of my nose I don't know if you can see I'm like trying to move every way so that you can see it so yeah so I have like these bumps here and those kind of like irritate me but i don't have any like side profile humps so i guess i can't really complain but yeah whenever i was like i think i was 12 we had went to a family member's house you know mexicans like we have so many family members that we don't even know we have and so we had went there and there was someone that he was like an extended family member and he had asked my mom who my doctor was and my mom was like what like what and he was like yeah who's the doctor who did her nose and she was like appalled like she almost lost it <laughs> because she was like um she's 12 like she did not get her nose done so this is the nose I've had all of my life just probably looks a little bit better because I contour but um yeah no I've never gotten my nose done and I honestly like it terrifies me to do like any kind of like surgery on the face like I'm mean, not gonna be wrong like I've done like fillers um like in my lips I got those taken out though, but I did those. I'm just not a fan of like face surgery. I don't know. It just scares me. Like that's just my thing with it. It just scares me. So yeah, so I haven't gotten my nose done. I actually got this question a lot too, which was what was my lip combo? I was using the NYX Downtown Beauty Lip Liner, Suede Lip Liner, and I used the Fairy Floss Gloss by ColourPop. Um, so the final question is, did you have a post-op appointment with your doctor? So yes, I did have a post-op appointment. I believe it was the day before I left, if I'm correct. And so it was about five days more or less had passed. And then I went to the post-op appointment and he kind of took out the stitches and looked at everything, drained me, you know, whatever needed to be done. And then he gave me a slip that gave me my clearance to leave. Without that paper, if you tell them that you traveled for surgery, because you, you have to specify what you're going there for. So if you tell them that you traveled for surgery, they will not let you leave unless you have that paper that says you're okay to go. And I heard, I had a friend that went there and she said that she didn't have her paper. And so when she went, she was leaving, I think like on the fourth day, like a lot sooner than she was supposed to be. And she said that they patted her like the hell down. Like they hurt her from how hard they patted her because they wanted to make sure she was really like good to 
leave. So be prepared for that if you try to leave before your post-op date or before you're ready to go. And that's also just not safe. You do want to like obviously get the medical clearance to go because obviously if your doctor says, no, okay, you can't go yet, it could be because something went wrong or you know, whatever. So listen to your doctor obviously and make sure that you have that paper before you try to leave the Dominican Republic. Okay, now this was not a question asked, but I just feel like it's just something that I can include in here. A lot of people feel like you go through like a butt fluffing process. For me, I don't think I did. I think my butt looks honestly very true to what it looked like after surgery, minus the back swelling. So the back swelling was what prevented my butt from looking that projected or whatever. Since then, my back has gone down, but more or less it looks the same to me. But all in all, I love my results. Love everything about it. I believe that's it. So I'm gonna go ahead and insert the body clips, show you what I look like. This is my waist and my butt. Ultimately, I don't think I have any more swelling back here. There may or may not be. So looking at me from the front, you can't really tell that I have my breasts done, but looking at me from the side because of the projection, you can see. I feel like they're the perfect size. This is what my butt is looking like. And yeah, I think that's everything. So uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for all of the questions, most of all, because if you didn't give me the questions, I wouldn't even know why I'd be sitting here talking about this time around. And thank you guys for all of the support and all of the kind comments. I have so many people like defending me and all the negative comments. I don't feel like this should ha like have to be said, but I don't care about negativity. I don't care about people's like negative opinions or like opinions on what I should do with my body. Everyone's entitled to their own opinion to how they feel, but ultimately those are things that you should apply to your life and feel good that you're applying them to your life. No one can live your life but you. No one can make decisions for your life or your body but you. So if you believe that surgery is stupid, a waste of money, pointless, whatever, whatever you feel it is, great. I'm not here to argue with you about it. Just apply that to your life. So for me, in my case, it's already done. So everything that you have to say about it, it's not gonna make a difference. It's done and I'm happy. So that, that's all that matters. So like it's pointless, but you know, you'll still have those people. But those of you that are defending me, I really appreciate it because you don't even know me. You don't have to do that, but thank you. I love that. So again, thank you guys for watching. And if you haven't already, hit the like button and subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next video.